Good morning, sisters and brothers. Good morning. Welcome to this morning's morning prayer. I trust that you are well. And we, by God's grace, we give him thanks for his, for his goodness in granting us a new day. And so let's begin with our prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of the Lord. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. <clears throat> as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And to collect for today, Tuesday, Eternal God and Father, you create and redeem us by the power of your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm this morning is... Uh, <coughs> Is a long one actually 106 Psalm 106 nice and fresh out here <laughs> Psalm 106 praise the Lord give thanks to the Lord for he is good his love endures forever who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise blessed are those who act justly who always do what is right Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation and join your inheritance in giving praise. We have sinned, even as our ancestors did. We have done wrong and acted wickedly, when our ancestors were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses, and they rebelled at the sea, the Red Sea. Yet he saved them for his name's sake, to make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up. He led them through the depths as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of the foe, from the hand of the enemy. He redeemed them. 
the waters covered their adversaries. Not one of them survived. And they believed his promises and sang his praise. But they soon forgot what they had done, what he had done, and did not wait for his plan to unfold. In the desert they gave in to their craving. In the wilderness they put God to the test. So he gave them what they asked for, but sent a wasting disease upon them. In the camp they grew envious of Moses and Aaron, who was consecrated to the Lord. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. It buried the company of Abiram. Fire blazed among their followers. A flame consumed the wicked. At Horeb they made a calf and worshipped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glorious God for an image of a bull which eats grass. They forgot the God who saved them, who had done great things in Egypt. Miracles in the land of Ham and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. So he said he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his promise. They grumbled in their tents and did not obey the Lord. So he swore to them with uplifted hand that he would make them fall in the wilderness make their descendants fall among the nations and scatter them throughout the lands. They yoked themselves to the Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. They aroused the Lord's anger by their wicked deeds and a plague broke out among them. But Phineas stood up and intervened and the plague was checked. This was credited to him as righteousness for endless generations to come. <clears throat> but the waters of Meribah, by the waters of Meribah, they angered the Lord, and trouble came to Moses because of them. For they rebelled against the Spirit of God, and rash words came from Moses' lips. They did not destroy the peoples as the Lord has commanded them, but they mingled with the nations and adopted their, their customs. They worshipped their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to false gods. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was desecrated by their blood. They defiled themselves by what they did. By their deeds, they prostituted themselves. Therefore the Lord was angry with his people and abhorred his inheritance. He gave them into the hands of the nations and their foes ruled over them. Their enemies oppressed them and subjected them to their power. Many times he delivered them, but they were bent on rebellion and they wasted away in their sin. Yet he took note of their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake he remembered his covenant, and out of his great love he relented. But he caused all who held them captive to show them mercy. Save us, Lord our God, and gather us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your, your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel. From everlasting to everlasting, let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So this psalmist is recounting the history, but not just the history, the sinful part of the history. The ways in which God's people again and again turned their backs on God. And again and again, God showed them mercy. And again and again, they turned their backs. Uh, you know, it is one of those psalms to meditate on and to see how God's people constantly, constantly rebelled against God. It's no different.
friends. It's no different with you and I. God does wonderful things and we are and we are grateful and we are happy. And then the next day, we grumble, we complain, we don't get what we want, and we 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 we, we go after idols, which is another big problem in our world. People abandoning the God who saved them, the God who created them, for worthless idols. Today we have different kind of idols. Our idols today are not made of wood and stone and so on. They're materialism and consumerism and, and all the other isms in our society. Those are, those are the idols going after things and going after issues and people that, that do not glorify God. Um, there is one other verse I wanted to, um, to point out, but I, I forgot what it is now. Um, uh, I'll, I'll come back to it another time. But let me read um, Tim Keller's um, commentary. He calls it the sin of ingratitude from verse 6 to 12. This psalm is about ingratitude. They did not remember your many kindnesses. Verse 7. It is a root of all human sin. Romans 1.21 says, They neither glorify God nor gave thanks to Him. That may not, uh, that may not at first sound serious, but consider the crime of plagiarism. It is both theft and lie. It robs others of their due and creates the illusion that you are more able than you are. Sin is cosmic ingratitude. It gives you the delusion that you have the ability to conduct and hold your life together. Actually, every day that your heart keeps pumping, your country is not invaded and your brain keeps functioning is wholly an undeserved gift of God. We ought to live simple, normal, uneventful days full of amazed, joyful, thankful, thankfulness to God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your... Lord, we thank you for our routine mercies. We thank you for sustaining our life daily, for being endlessly patient with me, with us, for shielding us from so many consequences of our foolish behavior and our foolish choices, for the ways you have walked with us in trials, and for all, all our answered prayers. We thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, let's move straight to the reading. Is I'm feeling raindrops on my head. It doesn't look like it, but I'm feeling it. So let's move. I want to. I do want to finish out here, and I don't want to rush inside. Our um, we are in. We are in Luke. Luke's Gospel, chapter nineteen, and we start at verse forty-one to the end. Luke nineteen, forty-one to the end. As Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. When Jesus entered the temple courts, he began to drive out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple. 
but the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. Yet they could not find any way to do it because all the people hung on his every word. Okay. In, a, in fact, we have two, res, two reactions. Um, or reactions to... Yeah, two reactions of Jesus in, in, this par, in this section to Jerusalem. Two. And it's, you know... It is actually the two same reactions or uh, um, responses that we need to have when we look out on the world, when we look out on the, the city or the country, or even at other individual people. Firstly, Jesus comes up to Jerusalem and he knows what's going to happen to Jerusalem. He knows that Jerusalem, this beautiful ancient city, is going to be destroyed and one of the reason of course is because it's, 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 it's a matter of God's judgment that is coming upon the city and he wept he wept over the city now there are only two times in the scriptures we have where Jesus wept one was at the tomb of Lazarus when he saw what death did to a family what death did to a you know, human being jesus wept and here when he looked at jerusalem he wept why is he weeping he's weeping over the judgment that is coming upon this town upon this city he's weeping over the sin and the fact that jerusalem has rejected their god jerusalem turned its back on its savior and Jesus weeps Jesus knows that the consequences of their action is going to be destruction is going to be death and Jesus weeps you know I said it's the same reaction we need to have when was the last time you weep over London <laughs> Newham when you look out and you see how people have turned their backs on God. And you know, you know and I know that judgment is coming. One day God will hold everyone accountable for their choices. And you see the choices that people are making. Maybe it's somebody you know. Maybe it's the town. Maybe it's London. Maybe it's the world. When you look out on the world. Do you weep? Do you weep over the sin? Do you weep over the consequences of people's actions that have brought evil and destruction on the world? There are times when I see certain things happening in the world on the television and I just can't watch it. I weep. I say, oh God, this, this is the result of human choices. It is, we, need to, we need to be more like Jesus with this, folks. We need to look at the, 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 the society around us. We need to look at the world and weep over it. But the second response Jesus had, he goes into the temple courts and he sees in the, in the, in the, in the heart, as it were, of the temple. And he sees evil. He sees sin. He sees something that is cause that will cause God, um, the heart of God, anger. And so he he destroys this. The, 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 he, he, you know, he goes in and he turns over the the the, the money changers and so on and this, the, those. And he says, my house will be a house of prayer. And you have made it a den of robbers. So on the one hand, Jesus wept over the, the sin. On the other hand, he was angry at the sin. They're both emotions. And both we need to have. There is that anger. That when you see someone ruining their lives, when you see... The world 
as it were, ruining the lives of people and ruining the world. <laughs> Sinners destroying one another. There is a weeping that needs to happen. But there is an anger that needs to happen. There's an anger against injustice. Anger against hate. Anger against sin. Yes, weep. There must be a time of lament and weeping. But there comes a time for anger and action. And so they, 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 both are important. We need to keep both of these responses to the sinfulness in our world in, 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 in balance. Jesus had it. Jesus wept over the sin and evil of Jerusalem, the judgment that is to come. Jesus was angry over the sin and evil that he sees in the city. We must do likewise. There's lots of injustice and evil in our world, hate and, and war and, 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 and everything that is that brings, that is, let's put it this way, that is not of love. Because God says we are to love God and we are to love one another. So we look in our world and we see so many things that's not of love. And what, do, what is our response to it? Jesus said, the response needs to be weeping, weeping, lamenting, oh, Oh, I wish, oh, how I long to see this world change. Oh, how I long to see the hearts of people transform. And you weep. But then you get angry. You get angry at the, and, and, and do something. <laughs> and do something, action. Out of, because of the, the hate and the injustice. You know, we, we've been having this whole, demonstrations and so on protests about black lives matter there is a time for protest there is a time to stand up and say enough is enough there is a time for that as well as much as there's a time for weeping and lament and we need to have both because that's the reaction that jesus had towards the sin the sinfulness of jerusalem we must have that same action that same attitude towards the sinfulness in our world and in our lives. Let's pray. <clears throat> our Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this new day that you've given us. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we pray, Lord, that you'll give us a heart for the world because the reason we don't weep, the reason we are not angry over the sinfulness in this world, is because we are not, we don't have the heart of Jesus. We don't have the attitude of Jesus. And so Lord, give us the attitude of Jesus towards the world in which we live, towards the people in this world. Give us a, an attitude of weeping, of lamenting, of crying out to you. For the life, for the welfare, for the well-being of this world. For the peace of this world. That love will reign in this world. Let us, help us to weep, God. Oh. But give us grace to also be angry at the injustice, at the evil, at the sin that is destroying people, that is destroying lives and families that's destroying this world. Give us grace to have both in our own hearts and so Lord help us we pray that we can come to you with the the lament on our hearts for this world especially we as we think about this virus and what's happening to this world it's something that is is unseen as it were and so yes Lord we lament we lament during this pandemic, but we also lament the hate 
and the, the, the violence and the injustice in our world, especially as we remember the, the matters of Black Lives Matter and, and issues surrounding racism and exploitation of other human beings, even modern day slavery. Give us grace, O oh God, to cry out, but help us to also be angry and seek to do something about it, to seek justice to seek peace, however small, in this sinful world. But of course, Lord, our greatest prayer, our greatest prayer is that your kingdom will come and your will be done so that there will be no hate, there will be no injustice, there will be, there will be peace, there will be prosperity, there will be well-being in this world wholeness and so lord we pray give us grace to always pray your kingdom come and your will be done on this earth let us pray this every day lord for the injustice we see in our world for the evil that we see in our world for the for for the hate that we see in our world for so for for the for the, the fact that so many people have turned their backs on their creator Lord, may your kingdom come right here in Newham, in Forest Gate, in this country, and in our world. And so, Lord, we bring all this to you this morning. We bring ourselves to you. We bring our lives to you. We seek your grace today, Lord. Lord, by ourselves, we can do nothing. In ourselves, we are nothing. But we thank you, Lord, that through you, by your grace, we have everything. And so, Lord, we pray that you will give us grace today to live for you and not just for ourselves. Give us grace today to lament over the evil in this world and to cry out to you. Even the evil in our own hearts, even the the shortcomings and failures that are in our own hearts, in our own family, in our own, in those who are closest to us. Give us grace to lament and to seek justice, to seek peace, to seek mercy even. Lord, we pray. And so, Lord, we bring this day to you and we surrender it all to you. There's so many things that's on our hearts today, Lord, but we, we surrender it all to you. And we pray that you will hear our prayer today, even as we embark on this new day. Give us grace to use the new opportunities today for you, so that we can help those whom you, have, whom you will bring across our path, that we will show Christ in all that we do today, in the words we say, in the things we do, in our attitude may Jesus Christ be exalted may he may he be seen in us today we bring this to you in Jesus name amen Christ be with me Christ within me Christ behind me Christ before me Christ beside me Christ to win me Christ to comfort and restore me Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, <coughs> Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So let's listen to our theme song as we say goodbye for this morning.
So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace. Have a blessed day, sisters and brothers.